So here we go, guys. Myself and Pete Hadley, both K6s, I'm proud of it. So we are going to talk about antenna analyzers. I only brought two. There are a plethora of them, as you guys know. You can Chevrolets all the way up to a Ferrari. So I'm just going to show you two tonight, and that's all we have time for. If you could kind of hold your questions and uh, comments till later, and I think we can do this. I timed it out last night at 25 minutes. So, the basics. Guys, this is what your antenna looks like to your radio. When your radio looks out that SO239 or that Type N, that's what it sees. You got the feed line, and you have R sub R, which is a virtual resistance equivalent to a 50 ohm resistor. Now, that's our standard today, 50 ohms. Not my idea, started in World War II. Coax, 50 ohms. Your radio output, 50 ohms. Now, what you would like to have is just the R sub R. <clears throat> There's always little nasty things that crop up, like inductive reactants. If your antenna is too long, it looks like an RL circuit. So then you have complex impedance, and normally what do we do? We have an antenna tuner that tunes that out. If your antenna is too short at the resonant frequency that you want, then it looks like an RC circuit and now you have more complex impedance and you need a tuner to tune it out. R sub O, I'll bet nobody in here worries about it at all because we make our antennas out of copper or aluminum. So very low resistance, very low. My dipole at home, maybe one to two ohms of resistance that actually burns up power in the form of heat. So, that's basically what you have, and I mean very basic, what you have that your radio sees when you turn it on. A series RCL circuit. Okay. Very simply, on a transmission line, the ratio of max voltage to min voltage is called BSWR. And I want everybody in here Say it like a man. Viswar. Viswar. <laughs> I had students who would go out in the field and send the cable back and actually write out every time Boldy standing wave ratio was, good <laughs> lord, just to take up time on the cable. It's, by the way, it's always a ratio. There's no such thing as, uh, my Viswar is two. No, it's not. It's two to one. My Viswar is 1.75. No, it's not. It's 1.75 to 1. Number two, you can only have 1 to 1 when the transmission line is terminated in a peer resistance of the same ohmic value as the characteristic of the line. Now, what's that mean? You can only have 1 to 1 if your radio is 50 ohms, your transmission line is 50 ohms, your connectors are 50 ohms, and your antenna is resonant, so it's 50 ohms. Okay? That's the only time you can have one-to-one. -one. If the load contains reactants, the load being the antenna, why would it contain reactants? Too long, X sub L. Too short, X sub C. Maybe the siding on your house. Maybe the neighbor's little uh, shed next door. How about the chain link fence right under my antenna? All of those things add on to it. The interference of the forward waves and the reflected waves creates standing waves on the line, and that's one thing that we always try to get rid of when we're using a coax fed dipole. And that's pretty much what I'm talking about here in class. Okay. Why do we even care? <laughs> All of us in here with gray hair grew up with vacuum tube radios. I never bought a tuner. I didn't need no tuner when I was a kid. We had Pi Networks. We peaked the grid, we dipped the plate. My first dipole I put up 55 years ago in California, 
we did the formula. My dad and I hung it in the tree. Peak dip, peak dip. Hey, dad, it works. I just talked to Los Angeles. <laughs> Must be working. <clears throat> Never, ever did I worry about Vizwar until we went to solid state radios. Because the solid state radios really are very picky about the 50 ohms. I think my TS820S at home will do like 5 ohms all the way up to 300. Okay, why do we care? That's the main one. We have crowbars, which are actually called fullback circuits. My Pro 3, long as it's 1 to 1 and up to 1.9 to 1, it gives me my full 100 watts out. As soon as the Vizwar hits 2 to 1, it crowbars back to 50 watts automatically. And at 3 to 1, it gives me about five, 0 to 5 watts. In other words, it doesn't want to play at all because of the heat that would be uh, that would come out of the final. It just you might really damage those power transistors. Number two, increased feed line loss. Energy is lost due to waves being reflected between the source and the antenna, and those reflections go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and they are, you know, eventually re-radiated minus the loss in the cable. So, any questions up to this point, and then we'll go into the show and tell portion. When you, when you say re-radiated loss in the cable, is that thermal? The thermal loss? Is Parsh, partial, but some of the wave is re-radiated. Right. And guys, while we're on the subject of Vizwar, two books that I really recommend, well, the main one, for those of you for that late night reading, can you imagine a book on BSWR? Mm -hmm. This whole book is on nothing but BSWR. It's absolutely amazing. It's by Maxwell W2VU. It's absolutely worth buying, I'll okay. tell you. Is that titled Reflections on this is This is Reflections 3. This is his third edition, Transmission Lines and Antennas. Wonderful book. Hey, Ron, I know you want to yes. the next part, but another question. Yes. So the reflected energy back into the shack also results in stray RFI in the equipment, but also potentially into the humans that are in the shack, correct? Sure, I've been bit on my, anybody been bit on their lip with the <laughs> microphone? <laughs> so there is a safety issue there of which grounding for RFI is different than grounding for safety. Yes. Uh, left AC circuit grounding. Very good. That's a plug for later. All Ron, right, guys. Ron. Now, yes. Uh, well, about that author, Maxwell, I, I love his equations, by the way. Uh, it's a different Maxwell. I know, I know. Okay. Uh, my, my, my question is, you said it's been, the, the standard's been 50 ohms since World War II. What was it before that? Well, it was twin lead. And then they invented okay. coax in 1937. And the coax, the Germans used 60 ohms, we used 50. Wasn't the first undersea telegraph line coax back in the 1850s? Yes, it was. Yes, it was, but I don't know the impedance of that. I think it varied, which is why it didn't work very well. <laughs> very inefficient, I remember. Guys, we have two today. We have the MFJ 269er. Pete, do you want to show them yours? You want to, or do you just want to do the slide? Up Let's you. go with it. I couldn't show anything better than that. Okay. MFJ, big product, they have a huge catalog, and I think for the money, this is a pretty good rig to have. This is a 269 Charlie, and does Vizwar, not only analog, does it digitally. I have one of these two, doubles as a free counter, 10 double A cells, which uh, it really goes through the A cells. That's the only thing I notice. Mm -hmm. 0.53 broadcast band, all the way up to 230 megs, and then the UHF is 415 to 470. <coughs> it takes 8 dBm, shoves it up to the antenna, and then reads what comes back. Bought 309 today from HRO. And I say this, I know this sounds stupid, right? Would anybody transmit into one of these? You know, hook a, 
took a walkie-talkie oh, with a cable into no the No more than button. once. <laughs> no more than once. Thank you, Don. <laughs> you guys know that a master's degree in electronics from Stanford does not really make you smart, because I had one of my students do this, and he said, Mr. Payne, it's a freak counter, and it will pop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I always put this on there. Please, don't do that. Okay. Then there's Comet, about $150 more, but I love my Comet. This is the one that I take to the field with me. Very easy to use. Dual cross meters, 1.8 to 500 megs continuous, no dropouts. Six AA cells that seem to last forever. They'll probably burn out tonight during the demo. <laughs> well, we've got a spare here. Good. Oh, well, yeah, we did. Thanks, Don. Colored TFT display and band sweep function. I can have a little graph on the antenna. This one takes zero dBm, shoves it to the antenna, and then reads what comes back. Two jacks. Got an SO239 for HF, and, of course, the type in here for UHF. 439.95, little pricey, but I think us hams, every one of us should have an analyzer. Every one of us hams should have one of these. It's just a good thing to have in the shack. And again, don't transmit <laughs> to this either. <laughs> okay, any questions? And then we'll start with the uh, demonstrations here of how they work. And you said you not transmit into it. Uh, is there a is there a is there a maximum? input for that? Haven't tried it, John, and I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> no, I'm well, thinking if you put it on a dummy antenna and just sit it next to it or something. Like oh, that. no, that's fine. But I'm saying that it expects zero dBm or less to come back into it. But I had the student, he took a cable and ran it and keyed it, and you know how that is. Okay, guys, so I'll turn this on so we can see what we're doing. Woo. Okay. No, I can't. Not now. <laughs> Okay. Has anybody seen these? These are great for classrooms. An antenna that goes from 140 to 480. So let's just see. Let's just see what this uh, resonant frequency is here. So we have to have. Yeah. Let's see. Did I bring? Did I bring the right one? Yes, I did, I believe. Oh my god, I didn't bring that adapter. Which one? I need a type in, I need a PL259 to type in female, or BNC female. What? Would you just hold this up? I have to, I have to cut that in. You got one? Yeah, and that bag right there in front of John. Thank you. That's good. All right. That's no. 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 Wrong. Yeah. Do you want to the BNC? I want a PL259 to BNC female. Oh, no, that's all right. You got one? I think so. Oh, no, no, I can do it go through two steps. Whoops. No, that's a female. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have too much to eat tonight. Okay, guys, here we go. Thank you, Bill. We owe, I owe you one. Okay. Okay, you got it. I got it. All right. We're going to turn this on. And I'll just let you hold that up. Yeah, like that. It should be around 140. Well, we'll see. So what we do, we switch the band here. Notice this beautiful digital readout, a TFT readout. And we're going to go down to 145 megahertz. And I'm tuning, and there's 1.000 to 1. Turn to your left. Ohms. And it says here the resonant frequency is 146.114. Everybody like that? Now, you touch it, Leon. Gee, it goes all in hell, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. 
Now, shorten it up, yeah. I've had people ask me, uh, hey Ron, can I use my 220 meg antenna on 140 megs? Well, okay. I don't think so. I can't make it any longer. Let's, let's see what this does. Let's see what this does. You're just lengthening the ground plane. Yep, let's see if that does anything. Mm -hmm. What would you expect it to do? Just what I did. About the same. Which is nothing. Nothing. Okay. You want to do a 440 then? Sure, why not? That's the best we can do is 150 on this one. Okay? All right, let's see. So primarily because you're inside. Primarily outside? <laughs> it's great standing out in the backyard. Before yes? You, before you do that, what, what's the visoir at 740? Okay. What is the visoir at that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Bill, you would never gripe about. 1.5 to 1. Oh, no. And it's actually 1.5 to 1 across the entire band. It doesn't even go to 2 to 1 until 140. So it would be just fine according to your radio. It would be just fine. Okay? Can I have that antenna when you're done? Yeah, sure. Everybody wants these. I wish he hadn't kept quit selling them, I'll tell you that. Well, let's do 440. Find the estate sale. Roden Schwartz also makes one. I got this at a convention in Frankfurt many years ago. Okay, 440. Anybody run 440? I guess we have that on the repeater, right? Quite around here, I agree. All right, let's see what we can do on 440. So we switch the band here, go up the scale to 414, 454. No, Ray, you have to switch to the UH. <laughs> I did that at home and I said, I won't do that at the meeting. Well, well you just demonstrated so we can know. Just, I just did, <laughs> yes. Don't do that. Don't do that again. Okay. Now, okay, at 436. Okay. Okay, 1.00. Was that a calibrated task you put on the Yes, it was. 1.00 to 1, 50 ohms at 445 megahertz. Perfect antenna. Okay? Your antenna will be very, very happy. And your radio will be happy at that. Okay? Any questions, guys? Okay, one more I have for you, which I just put together. It's really cool. Does anybody have the ARL handbook? The... Uh, not the handbook, but the antenna, the, uh, antenna yeah. book. Yeah. There's a guy in there, WA5BJB, and he's got a super website. Guys, for less than a dollar, you can make 10 dB gain. This is a wide space, two meter, uh, 440 array. And the way he feeds the center, he uses J. He uses a J feed, like a J pole. Man, this thing is unbelievable. So, I'm going to hook this up. And I think you guys will enjoy this. I mean, it's... You if I go home and make one heck of oh, an antenna. Yeah, wood. Unless you're getting right. Very high, very high Q. Very high Q. Okay. Enough. You got that. Okay. It's not right, right hand polarized. <laughs> okay. So is that a bailing on there? I've uh, 
pointed this at our repeater, and it's like, gotcha, don't hear you at all. Mm. All right, so I built the antenna, and this is basically what I did at home. I'm just going to sweep it. Okay, can you point it out that way? There we go. Okay. Ow, my ears. Okay, <laughs> two to one point. Oh, man, it's moving around. Okay, here we go. Two to one points, 456. He's aiming at the resonant blinds. And it is 1.00000 to 1, 50 ohms at 440.1 megahertz. You can read four decimal places on no, that. No, I made it up. <laughs> we are, guys. Now, what I want to do, I could make a chart. So I press sweep center, and it will give you a nice curve on the antenna. Ideally, without you moving the point. <laughs> Ideally, yes. Right. Don't so, is there an interface the so that you can print stop, that? Stop breathing. <laughs> is there an there interface is. so you can print that? Uh, uh, no, there's that. not. No, there's not. A, a good camera can focus close enough to get it. Sure. I've done that. Sure. But, guys, this is the one I like. I really do like this. I know it's a little pricey, mm -hmm. but it's a very nice meter. Pete, you like yours? I like mine. Not quite so pricey. Yeah. And I agree. So, guys, you've seen the Chevrolet to the Ferrari. Um, Comet's always made some pretty good stuff. They've had a lot of good uh, stuff over the years. And by the way, this is the Mark II. Don't go to HRO and let them sell you the other one without the screen. They have the standard CAA 500 without the screen. The screen's nice to have. Yes. Okay, guys. And I guess, uh, any questions?